It was a dream that became a reality. Roman Abramovich and his billions transformed Chelsea. Marquee names were lured to West London in pursuit of major trophies, yet one prize eluded them. Until at last, and against all the odds, Chelsea were crowned champions of Europe. For many years, a solitary league championship in 1955 was the high point for Chelsea. It was a title that ensured eligibility for the inaugural European Cup, but the English FA viewed the competition as a distraction, and Chelsea were prohibited from taking part. Their quest for European football's biggest prize would last more than half a century. Moderately successful for several decades, in the 1990s, Chelsea were able to take advantage of the freer movement of players brought by the Bosman ruling. The growing reputation of the Premier League attracted many foreign stars to Stamford Bridge. Rud Hullet, Roberto Di Matteo, Marcel Desailly, Gianluca Vialli and Gianfranco Zola would all play significant roles in Chelsea's burgeoning success. Managed by Hullet, the club won the FA Cup in 1997, with Di Matteo scoring after just 45 seconds. That victory began a golden age for the club. With Gianluca Vialli in charge, the Cup Winners' Cup, League Cup, FA Cup and the first Champions League appearance all followed. They had been successful in, uh, in the FA Cup and, uh, and in the European Cup but it, it was sort of a, a club with ambitions to grab the Premier League title, I felt. Um, in the early stages, we struggled a little bit to, to man that challenge. In 2003, the club's fortunes changed forever. Russian billionaire Roman Abramovich purchased a controlling interest in the club from Ken Bates. It was a bit surreal. It was... Um, First, I was first and foremost. I was really surprised that that Ken Bates um, sold Chelsea, um, and and I, I think I was in Iceland when I heard the the news that first thing that I was told is yeah, some Russian billionaires just bought Chelsea, and I went okay, well that's interesting. Well, we'll we'll see what happens now. Abramovich had a plan, and its objective was big and bold: to make Chelsea one of the world's top teams. It went fairly smoothly. It's a very, very kind man when we met him, and very ambitious, very enthusiastic. Um, obviously demanded a lot of us as players and said that if we wanted to wear the Chelsea shirt, there, there are certain things that we would have to live up to and that would be, you know, become a winning team. His words were backed by actions. £100 million pounds were spent on new talent, but manager Claudio Ranieri fell short of delivering the required success. He had four seasons in charge. He, um, he did good things, but he just lacked that little bit, that edge to, uh, to turn us into champions. In June 2004, Abramovich brought the hottest property in world football to Stamford Bridge. Why Chelsea? Uh, Chelsea, because uh, I'm reading a lot of things about it. How do you cope with the pressure? How do you cope with big players? How do you cope with uh, the urgent ambition to start winning titles? Jose Mourinho had just won the Champions League with Porto and brought with him defenders Paulo Ferreira and Ricardo Carvalho. Arjen Robin and Didier Drogba were drafted in to offer attacking menace. And the young Portuguese manager also impressed those already at the bridge. He'd sat down when he walked into Chelsea and uh, brought all his staff in, introduced them, um, and explained that he wanted to win um, and was quite sort of um, adamant about it, really, in his way. Very simple, well, we're going to be winners now, and uh, everyone bought into it straight away. 
we were all a bit scared because you hear these stories and you read these things in the papers and you know we heard stories about everyone has to wear a suit like a shirt and tie every day to training and you, know, you can't be a second late or you know you're sent home and so there was a there was the fear factor to succeed in this country i have to adapt i have to to learn where um, i'm working i have to understand the culture of the of the, the football country i have to understand the culture of um, my players and my team and adapt myself to that and, and try to establish uh, a philosophy and a team that can win in this, in this country, can succeed in this specific country. When he turned up, it, it was much more pleasant than that. Uh, really nice, nice guy, uh, obviously a, a character, a lot of charisma. When you go to another country, when you start from zero, even uh, if you're a big player, you you have a yeah you play with new players you a new club uh, a new country and that that the most the most important thing is that you have a coach who who trusts you he's the one that brought me to the club and i think not just me but most of the players loved him uh if you weren't playing you didn't like him but if you're playing then you're going to love him i believe um, that the most difficult thing is 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 to lead men and to lead different men with different uh, uh, cultures with different uh, brains, with different qualities. You need a strong uh, uh, manager and we had this in Mourinho. It was really, really important that he could handle all these kind of players. And um, I think you could see this on the pitch. Everybody was, was doing his job and was playing for the team. That, is, that was important, but it was not easy from sometimes. You just try to be honest with them, fair with them and be together all the time, good moments, bad moments, try to be together all the time is something that happened naturally. His personality was a huge thing for me because he, he, his personality brought out the best in his players and, and it brought the group together and uh, I think that was the magic that he has that, that maybe other people don't quite have. The first trophy of the Mourinho revolution came with the defeat of Liverpool in the Carling Cup final. That was an outstanding day and I was so pleased you see, I look pictures of me with that Carling Cup and like the, you see the joy in my face, you know? And some people snigger a little bit at the Carling Cup now, but to me on that day, that was the Champions League, the World Cup, everything. An Oscar, it was everything you could possibly win. It was just amazing to be a Chelsea fan and player and then win something. The final was sandwiched between two legs of a Champions League tie against Frank Rijkaard's Barcelona. It was like we was playing an alien team. I'd never seen a team do that to us or to anyone. I'd never felt that power on a pitch. Like from Ronaldinho, Eto'o, it was just, they were just amazing. You know, you think you're a good player and then you go and play at the new Camp and you think, whoa. So when they come, come to us uh, the next week, we had, you know, we had you no know, Drogba, you know, Robin, you know, so people were thinking, right, us off. And we just started off that house on fire. And all of a sudden, before we knew it, we were three nil up at home with just under 20 minutes on the clock. And then we were obviously brought back down to earth with going in at half time 3-2 and uh, the tie turned on its head again and uh, we managed to go through in the second half. After defeating Bayern Munich, Chelsea faced Liverpool in the semi-final. Luis Garcia's ghost goal would haunt Chelsea and Mourinho and their European ambitions of two years later would also end at Anfield. We lose the Champions League semi-final with a goal that was not a goal, was also a, a magic moment. In the negative way, was also a, a magic moment. Mourinho's first season, 2004-05, saw Chelsea lose just one league game, and the climax was historic. Chelsea were champions of England for the first time in 50 years. To win the, the Premiership was magic for the club, and everybody that was in the club at that time was feeling that, that magic of, of of being finally a champion after, after 50 years was, was a fantastic moment. Quality players all over the pitch. You know, you had Lampard, who's unbelievable. You knew he was going to get you 20 goals. You knew he was going to get you important goals. He will be spoken of as the best Chelsea player ever, I think. Um, his, uh, his motivation and drive is, is incredible. His uh, goal-scoring record is uh, phenomenal. You had JT at the back, arguably, he was at his absolute peak of his powers, and we just a magnet, wasn't he? Paulo Ferreira. 
Ida coming in or, or Michael Essien. You know, Macca, you know, I, I love the geezer. He, he made, he gave me the ball more than anyone ever in the career. Like, he found me when I didn't even know I was there. For me, he was the key for, for everything good that was happening at Chelsea. Claude Makaleli had arrived from Real Madrid and Chelsea thrived as he rewrote the handbook on defensive midfield play. Aptly, he scored the goal that sparked title celebrations. I never get emotional on a football pitch because, but you know, when that final whistle went for the, for the Charlton game at home and, we, and it was just, you know, I just felt myself welling up a little bit. I had to sort of compose myself because it was such a, you know, you can't, you, you can't, you don't know when you're going to get emotional or things like that, and it was just 50 years. To give uh, the club that victory after so many years of, of going down into lower divisions and struggles um, was the, you know, the most special probably moment of my career, um, certainly my club career, and I think my career in general that first year of winning it because of you could feel what it meant to so many people and um, saying again about how together we was and it was like a family. When you win as a family, it feels even better than, than you win as, with certain individuals. So we felt as a group so special that year. It was, we won the league with record points and for me it was just going into games, I've never had it before, I've never had it since, but you just expected to, to win every game. There was never a problem. We didn't fear anybody, we thought we could beat anyone and that was all transmitted through him. Chelsea retained their Premier League title with a swagger, leading the table from week three. There was a lot of pressure. Uh, there, there is different pressure that comes with it, but it, it's strange when you win your first title, you sort of you get the, the hunger for more. Back-to-back -back titles were sealed with a win over fierce rivals Manchester United. A domestic cup double followed in 2007. Arsenal were beaten in the League Cup and then Manchester United in the first FA Cup final at the new Wembley. Didier Drogba scored the deciding goal in extra time. But in September 2007, the football world was left reeling when Mourinho and the club parted. Officially by mutual consent, the Portuguese left a large shadow. It was so sad that Jose left. He was a great guy, a great manager. I didn't quite see it coming, um, and he'd been so huge for me personally, um, and I'm sure a lot of players will tell you the same. Uh, to see him leave and to see that sort of character walk out the door after what he'd done for the club and the transformation that had happened um, throughout the place when he was there was um, it was about like the blue. Director of football Avram Grant took the place of the departing manager. My opinion for every coach was would be a, a difficult difficult job after after Mourinho. He was such an such a hero at Chelsea still, and uh, yeah, it doesn't matter who was coming after him would be difficult for him and, and it was difficult. But Avram done a good job. He was a smart guy. I think in the dressing room on the on the training training pitch. The Israeli guided Chelsea to the Champions League semi-finals, where they faced Liverpool once again. After a drawn first leg at Stamford Bridge, Didier Drogba scored twice. Chelsea had finally reached European football's grandest stage. One thing I regret about that night was um, I just think there was too much celebration just to get into the final. Avram, you know, he's a good guy, you know, and I like him a lot. But it's an achievement to get to the final. But I thought, no, we ain't won it yet, you know? Grant had gone one step further than Mourinho. Now the Russian owner could win the title he so craved in the Russian capital. Players did stick together and we thought, right, this is our chance to, to win the Champions League. and. With the help of Vavram, and then we got to the final. You have to take into account how good that Man United team was, because people will look at historical teams at Man United, and uh, you had three of the best players in the world playing in the front three: Ronaldo, Rooney, Tevez. You know, you had Skulls, Geeks, Carrick. You know, Ferdinand in his prime. But then to go one 0 down, and then 
Lamps again popping up with, with a great goal and then going to extra time, it, it was hard. That's the best United team has ever been and we was better than them on the night. Half an inch on a post. It was really hard to, to lose on finals, uh, on penalties. Um, it's the hardest thing which what can happen. Everyone was so disappointed after, and uh, but you can't you can't change it. Grant paid the price for failure, and Brazilian Luis Felipe Scolari took over. The atmosphere, the the, the relationship. Uh, he was a nice guy, you know, he was an experienced coach, big name, and uh, it looked like he was the perfect coach for the club. But uh, from over the time, it shows that um, he got not really on with the, with the English football and with the kind of playing. The way it was with Scully, was what Avram done was he, he, he continued with the training from Mourinho and he, uh, you know, just let the players do what we knew, you know, and didn't try and change what... And then the first time at the club, a manager come in with completely different ideas, and he just got met with a little bit of resistance, I think, whether consciously or subconsciously, I don't know. It was difficult, and, um, yeah, after... after not after seven months or eight months, we, we... the club changed him. A change of manager, familiar opponents, a different outcome. Goose Hiddink steered Chelsea to a 7-5 aggregate victory over Liverpool after an extraordinary couple of matches. In the semi-finals, after a goalless first leg in Catalonia, the second leg at Stamford Bridge had early thunder from Michael Essien. We had maybe decisions that didn't go away, but it's football and when you look back at it, yeah, you're angry at the time, but it's football, we've had decisions that's, that's gone our way that, that maybe shouldn't. It was difficult to accept because, um, yeah, we should get a few penalties, at least one. And, uh, yeah, to went out with a 0-0 and 1-1, uh, first shoot on goal in the 94 minute was so unlucky for the club because I had the feeling if we reached the, the final again in this year, we could win it. Chelsea's pain was eased somewhat by another FA Cup triumph. Beating Everton at Wembley was a decent send-off for Hiddink as he returned to his job coaching Russia's national team. Still seeking European glory, Abramovich turned towards Italy. Carlo Ancelotti had won everything as a player and manager with AC Milan. Brazilians David Luiz and Ramirez were added to the squad as Ancelotti sought to satisfy Abramovich. We had a good time, you know, we won the, the double and uh, all together I think it was a great time with, with Carlo. But failure in Europe meant Ancelotti survived only two years. The pursuit of the Champions League appeared to have become an obsession. Next to try his luck was another Portuguese manager, André Vias Boas. The expectations for the club, you know what they are. And the managers that have, that have sit, uh, sit in this chair for, for, the legs, uh, for, the, for the last seven years have, have been challenged for, uh, for, for the trophies. Juan Mata was a notable signing, but the young manager couldn't last under the pressure of poor form and various personality clashes. He was replaced by his assistant, the fans' favourite, Roberto Di Matteo. Shows that he cares and the, and the passion he shows in the team meetings, on the training field when things don't go well. And he always, you know, refers back to, you know, the way he cares about this football club. You know, he's got a great rapport with the fans, a great understanding with the players. You know, he's communicating with everyone. And things have gone very well for us in the Premier League, in the FA Cup and Champions League as well so far. So he deserves, you know, a huge amount of credit for that. Early 2012 in the Champions League found Chelsea fighting back from a seemingly impossible position against Napoli. Early on in the season when things didn't go well, people questioned the spirit and the togetherness of the players. And it just goes to show, you know, sometimes, you know, in previous seasons we haven't had a little bit of luck and, and things don't go away. But, you know, this season we've had a little bit of, a little bit of luck, which is always nice. The togetherness that everyone's shown since Robbie's come in has been, has been excellent. When Benfica were defeated home and away, players and fans began to believe, but the semi-final draw tempered enthusiasm. 
Barcelona. Everyone was thinking Barcelona or is thinking Barcelona is the best club in the in the world right now. And we had the chance to beat them, to beat the, the, the past as well, because everyone remembers that game when Iniesta scored in the in the last minute at the Stamford Bridge. And maybe it was the last chance for, for this generation of players to win the Champions League. After squeezing a one-goal lead from the first leg, Chelsea began poorly at the new camp. When they scored the second one and JT went uh, sent off, uh, everything was lost. Then Ramirez scored that uh, great goal. Uh, we were still alive. And Messi missed the penalty. It was like no one could believe what was happening, but it was like a like a dream. I was running and running and running, never uh, dribbling Victor and scored that goal, and it was like uh, a moment of, of uh, everything was stopping. We knew we were in the final. I think that day we we started believing that we could do everything. We could beat anyone if we could do that against Napoli, Benfica, and especially Barcelona. Having overcome Barcelona in the Champions League, Chelsea weren't surprised to find Liverpool as their opponents at Wembley in the FA Cup final. DDA Drogba again proved decisive. That's when you call up on the big players. Uh, they really love the big occasions and the big settings, and it's made for people like DDA. You know, he takes it upon his shoulders to, you know, to, to bang a goal. In. It was Chelsea's fourth FA Cup win in six years, and Drogba became the first player to score in four FA Cup finals. Now loomed the biggest night in Chelsea's history, a Champions League final against Bayern Munich in Munich. Chelsea, who were missing three key players, including their captain, were very much underdogs. And we were in the final. Uh... Uh, we felt like uh, like maybe it was the, the the last chance we have to win the Champions League. Even playing in Bayern Munich uh, at Munich was very difficult, maybe more than playing against Barcelona. But we needed to to be ready and focused. We had four players suspended. Everything was against us, but we showed that we wanted the Champions League more than anyone. In the 82nd minute, Chelsea fell behind to Thomas Müller's header. Some things are, are written in the stars, I think. But Chelsea refused to give up on their long quest. Didier Drogba rose to meet Juan Mata's corner and broke German hearts. Didier and, and the way he scored, it was just meant, I think, for him to, to bow out like that. They scored in the 82 minutes and we scored as well after that. Drogba went from hero to villain by conceding an extra time penalty. Ex-Chelsea man Arjen Robben stepped up. In football, when you don't score the chances you have, you lost. And, and we knew and we were talking on the bench, we are going to win, for sure. Doesn't matter what happened, we are going to win that game because it's for us, it's our time. Chelsea's second Champions League final would be settled by a penalty shootout. Football is, is wonderful because you can go through a lot and different emotions in the same game. Bastian Schweinsteiger's miss meant that with his last kick for the club, Drogba had the chance to make Chelsea champions of Europe at last. We've been fighting to win, to win everything uh, possible with the, with the club and the best way to finish was to win the Champions League. We knew that the Champions League was the, the most wanted one for, for everyone at the club, from the owner until the, the last supporter. And we could do that dream come true last season. It was amazing, amazing to, to have the chance to, to win the Champions League. You know, when nobody expected us to be there, we, we won it. The way he ended his Chelsea career is probably the way anyone would uh, want or dream of ending their career. You know, it's like a, a movie, you know, it's like a, a script. Roman Abramovich's first decade as Chelsea owner had been both eventful and hugely productive. A Champions League triumph, a Europa League success, three Premier League titles and four FA Cups have established Chelsea as a major power at home and abroad.
Still seeking glory in 2013, Abramovich turned to Jose Mourinho once again. We are ready to work uh, together again and with much better conditions at this time to succeed and to have um, what this club wants.